Hi, I'm Chris Bailey, and I'm a Blender YouTuber over at C. Bailey Film, and today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're gonna be talking about soft body dynamics and cloth sims, but let's get started. Don't forget to check out cgcookie.com. We've got a ton of professional Blender trainers there ready to answer your questions. You can jump in and enroll today. Okay, so you're in Blender, and you want to have some cloth that uh, can fold on top of things or fall in your scene, or let's say you've got a beach ball, and you want it to like bounce across the beach and you're trying to figure out how to get that look of an inflated object or how to get that look of a cloth that can drape naturally over things. Thankfully, Blender has got some really awesome soft body sim tools under the hood. Now, what's a soft body? Now, if you've watched the rigid body dynamics tutorial that I put up a little while ago, you'll know that you know we can have hard objects that collide and scatter with real physics uh, in a really cool way. But we can also simulate objects that aren't hard that bend and distort and deform whenever they collide with other things. And that's where soft body dynamics and cloth sims come in. Now, Blender uh, has a lot of great options. Just under the physics tab, you come over here and we've got all of our different uh, simulation options. And the one right here, soft body, has traditionally been the one that we've used for you know uh, objects that need to deform whenever they collide. However, Blender's got a fantastic cloth sim now, and personally, I find I'm pretty much just using this now to do everything that I would have normally done with soft body. Um, there are some differences between these two, but when you're just getting started and you're learning this stuff, I'd recommend really just sticking with cloth because you're finding you'll have more options and it's a little more versatile, and to be honest, it just works really well. So let's jump in and make something. Okay, so I've got my standard blender scene here ready to go. Um, and what I'm going to do is first I'm going to create a, a ground that I can have things collide with. So I'm going to hit A to select all, X to delete, Shift A and grab a plane and S to scale. And I'm going to scale that up. Now I'm going to go Shift A and I'll grab a cube. Let's put this cube right here in our scene, something like this. And then let's create another plane. So Shift A, Mesh Plane, and this one will grab up and let's scale it up just a little bit so it's larger than the cube. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'll type F3 and I'll type in the word subdivide until I get that uh, subdivide option there. And I'll just hit that and then open up this little pop up menu, which is just behind my head there. And I will just roll this up till we get a bunch of different subdivisions because uh, that's one important thing about these simulations. You need to have lots of mesh. The more mesh you have, the better the simulation is going to look. Okay, great. So I've got my plane ready. I'm going to come over here to cloth and I'm just going to turn on cloth. Now I'm going to click this box and I'm going to make this object a collision object by clicking under the physics tab, clicking collision. You have to activate things, otherwise it'll just pass right through. So again, I'll click collision here as well. So both these now are colliders. Now let's just run this and see what happens. I'm going to press play on my timeline. There we go. Now we've got this really cool little sim where this uh, sheet has folded down over my cube. Now I can right click and go uh, shade smooth on this guy just to make it look a little bit more like cloth. So that's pretty cool, very straightforward. As you can see, we didn't really have to do anything to get it to behave uh, in a way that looked cool. Now, it's not quite realistic for, a, let's say like a fabric material. This looks more like a plastic material, the way it's behaving. And that's where the real nuance comes in of working with cloth sims or soft body sims is changing all the different settings that you get in here to create different looks for different types of material. Now, there is a lot here to go into, and we're not gonna cover all this stuff in great detail. The cool thing about Sims is that you can approach it, even if you don't understand what all the different numbers do, you can tweak the values and run the Sim over and over again to view the different responses. Plus, Blender does have some very helpful tool tips. If you just hover your mouse over any of these, you'll get a description over what it does. Uh, so there's a way to work through it and systematically kind of figure out what each of these things do. But let's just talk about some of the basics. So the main things that we've got here is stiffness, the stiffness controls, the dampening controls, the internal springs, and the pressure. These are kind of the main sections. Now, stiffness and dampening are kind of working together. So stiffness is what it sounds like. How stiff is your cloth? Is it like a piece of cardboard or is it like a piece of uh, you know tissue paper? Dampening is how much does it slow down when it begins to deform? So we can say with stiffness, how much we want it to be able to deform. And then dampening, how much we want that, that deformation to slow down once it starts. And that's a way of refining your sim so that it just looks a little bit nicer. It gives you that extra bit of control. Okay, so another way to get more realistic behavior in something like this is actually to increase the subdivisions quite a bit. So we don't really have a lot of geometry at the moment. This is all we've got to work with. So that's all Blender has in order to calculate how this clause should behave. So if we come over to the modifiers tab, we can add a subdivision surface modifier. And this is an important point. You see, I can drag it before the cloth. Things go a bit crazy there, but I'll go back to the first frame. 
Claw Sims and all the other Sims, they're modifiers. So it's important what order they are in the stack. So right here, by putting the subdivision first and cranking it up to two, I'm creating more subdivisions for it to use to calculate the cloth sim. Now, if I run it, you can see I'm going to get a much more realistic result. Now, I'm getting a lot of jaggies still, and I can actually clean that up even more by coming here and adding a subdivision surface after the cloth sim. And now you can see it really smooths things out, which looks really nice. Now, there's one other problem, and you can see right here we're colliding. The cloth is actually passing through itself. Now, thankfully, we can easily change that. If we come back to the physics tab, we can scroll all the way down to the bottom here. And under the collisions drop down, we've got self collisions. If you just turn that on, go to the first frame, we can see it behaves much more appropriately. Now, these are just the default settings. We really haven't done much at all to change this. And it's pretty cool, the result we get already. But let me show you one other really cool thing. You can create some really interesting effects with a single plane if you turn pressure on. Watch what happens when I do this. You can see it actually behaves as if it's a cloth floating in the wind. And that's because pressure actually looks at the origin point of the object and is meant more for you know enclosed cloth objects, like a ball, for example, that has internal pressure of some kind of air. But if you put it on something flat like a plane, you can get some really, really cool results. Okay, so next let's look at pressure and how it behaves in an enclosed object. So let's take this cube, let's bring it up, and we'll come back to the physics tab and we'll go ahead and turn on cloth for this guy. Go to the first frame. And let's come right down here to pressure and let's turn it on. Let's go to add a subdivision surface modifier as well to this guy and bring it right up here before collision and cloth. So we don't really need collision anymore at this particular instance. So I'm just gonna turn collision off and I'll come back over here to my subdivision surface. I'll crank it up, I might turn it to simple so that we keep the box shape and I'll crank it up to three. Now let's see what happens. Now let's add some pressure to this. Let's turn this up to like one. And we'll go back to the beginning here. You can see it puffs up like it's got air inside it. If we put this up to two, it's going to do it even more. And it becomes kind of this little bouncy pillow object, which is pretty fun. Now, if you've got two soft body objects and you want them to collide, so let's take a mesh plane and let's bring this back up. Let's turn this into a cloth. You'll notice that um, the cloth sims don't really interact. You can see they just passed right through. And that's because we need to have a collision activated for these guys as well. So let's go ahead and turn on collision for both of these. Now let's go to the modifier stack. We have to make sure collision is after the cloth because you want it to simulate where the cloth should be. And then once it does that, you should simulate the collision because these objects are moving. If we had it the other way around, this uh, cloth is gonna collide with this cube as if it hasn't moved anywhere, as if a simulation hasn't taken place. So you'll see this cloth kind of hanging in space while the cube drops down. But by making sure that we've got the right order, then things will work. And yeah, it gets a little wild. All right, let's take everything we just learned and let's apply it by making a really cool, satisfying animation. It's gonna start with a clean slate, delete everything out. I'm gonna go Shift A, create a plane, scale it up. I'm gonna go Shift A, create another plane, rotate on the Y axis 90 degrees. I'm gonna scale this one up like so. I'll grab it on the X. I'll Shift D to duplicate, grab it on the X to bring it this way. And I'm going to take both of these guys and I will make sure that they are set to be collision objects. And I'll make the floor a collision object as well. Next, I'll create a cube and I'll grab it up and I'll grab it on the Y and bring it right over here to this side. I'm going to take this cube and I'm going to make an array out of this cube and I will Make the first value zero, the second one one, and actually I'll drag it out just a little bit so there's some separation. And I will increase the count just up to maybe, uh, let's do three. Also center it in my scene. Now I'm also gonna add in a subdivision surface modifier to these guys. And I also wanna add a bevel modifier. I'll put the bevel modifier first. This will just bevel these cubes a little bit for me and then I'll set my subdivision surface to two. I'll right click and shade smooth. And then I'll come down to my array and I'll just bring them as close as I can, just like that. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, my array modifier and I'm actually going to uh, offset these guys a little bit on the Z. So I'm gonna take this and I'll just offset them up just a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna come over to my physics tabs. I'll go ahead and turn on cloth and now I want to have these boxes to like kind of fall and land on top of each other. I'm going to do a couple of rows. 
So I want them to be interacting. So remember, whenever you want to have two cloth sims interact, you also need to turn collision on. So I'm going to turn collision on. Now remember, this is all one object right now because I'm just using modifiers. And so I don't have to apply this to a bunch of different cubes. Now I'm going to come here and I need to make sure everything's in the right order. Now we've got bevel first, then subdivide, then array. So this is all going to work right. And because these are first, it's going to do all this and then it's going to perform the calculation. And what's so cool about the fact that these are modifiers is that this cloth sim is going to treat each of these as their own object, right? So it's really nice. We don't have to like duplicate them out or anything. Now uh, I've got collision last, which is correct. I'm going to make sure cloth is first, then collision is last. We're all set to go. Now I can come over to my settings here and I'll just go to cloth. I'm going to turn on internal springs and pressure. Uh, now with pressure, I'm going to give it a pressure of one. Now the other thing I want to do is I'm going to have just a few more cubes in my scene. So I'll take these guys and I'm going to shift D to duplicate grab Z and bring these guys up. And uh, for this one, I think what I'll do is I will uh, change the array so that it goes the opposite direction. And I'll do it one more time. I'm just making sure nothing is intersecting and it's all nice and clean. Okay, now also um, sometimes when you've got a single plane uh, that serves as a barrier, because the idea is I wanna have all these cubes, they're all gonna fall down in between these planes that I've set up. So they don't fall everywhere. They're just gonna kind of land and stack neatly. When you have an object like this as a collider, it's a single plane, single polygon. Sometimes it works. Like when it's a floor, it tends to work pretty well. And one of the key things with that is you want to make sure single sided is ticked, which is what's always ticked by default when you add a collision modifier. This is basically telling Blender, hey, this object is just one polygon. It's flat. There's nothing no depth to it. So treat it that way. However, sometimes you can get stuff where you think have things slip through the barrier and they don't quite work. Um, in the calculation, you'll have moments where suddenly it'll stop detecting the plane and it'll go through it. To get around that, what we can do is subdivide these and actually um, give them a little bit more geometry. Go ahead and roll my cuts there. And also extrude it. So I'm going to E to extrude, grab X, and I'll do the same with this other one. So subdivide, give it a bunch of subdivisions, hit E to extrude, grab X, and just pull that out. And I'll just take this. I'm also going to create some side barriers. So I'll shift E to duplicate, rotate Z 90 degrees. Grab this on the Y and I'll just line it up so that it's uh, they've got enough space to fall without colliding. I'll just bring this one right over here. I want to give them a little bit of room because I don't want them to clip these walls as they fall down, but not too much because I do want all of this to to catch them. So I'm going to bring them up as well. So there's lots of lots of protectors. Now what we'll do is we'll run this simulation and then I also have to untick single sided. Don't forget to do that because we've now extru extruded the geometry of all these. So they're no longer single sided, but the bottom, the plane is a single sided. We'll just leave that flat because that, that should work fine. Now, one other thing I forgot to do is I want to come over here to each of my uh, arrayed cube groups, the, these objects here. Just shift select all those guys. And under my physics tab, under internal springs, I forgot I wanted to change my into my max spring creation to one. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to type one and hold down alt and hit enter. Now, um, as far as what's going on here with internal springs, we haven't really talked about that in detail. But the simple thing is adding internal springs can uh, stiffen the cloth or it just kind of helps the way the cloth reacts to other things when it does collide with them. It can make it look a little bit more realistic. You'll notice if you turn internal springs off and run your sim, it's going to look really similar if you turn it on and run it. It's going to be pretty comparable. If this is set to zero, though, and you have internal springs set on, you'll notice that the boxes don't deform a whole lot. They kind of stay pretty rigid. And so it, that's a way of kind of allowing the springiness of the material to kind of be a bit more controlled. So but I found that this was just a good result. Um, again, I landed on this by playing with the numbers one number at a time, run the sim, see what it looked like, try a different value run the sim. If you do one, one value at a time and run your sim, you're going to begin to see the difference that each thing makes. And that's how you're going to build that knowledge to know how to use soft body dynamics really well. And one final thing we need to do is come to each of these guys and make sure we turn on self collisions. Now I've got them all selected. So I'm going to hold down the alt key while I click this and that will activate it for all three. Self collision is really important because as these things collide with each other, they also need to be able to collide with themselves for it to work properly. Now to run this sim, what I want to do is I'm going to use the cache to do it or the cache, depending on where you're from. So I'll come to the uh, cache here and I'm going to go bake all dynamics. It will bake all the dynamics in my scene. 
uh, so that I get a really accurate result and I can really judge well what I've got. Now, the key is once I've baked it, uh, then the simulation won't run anymore. It's just going to play back what it's saved, the, the data that it's saved. So what's cool about that is I can turn off all of these guides and when they're all turned off, uh, it, it looks like they're just, these boxes are just going to fall and neatly land in place. So it's pretty cool. All right, let's bake and let's see the final result. Hope you've learned some really great tips today for how to use cloth sims uh, to create some really nice self body dynamics. I hope you have a lot of fun exploring the different uh, values and tweaks that you can make to these kinds of sims. Um, I'd encourage you to take your time. Don't get in a rush with it and work with small, low poly counts first. So work with the geometry. It's not too dense. So your computer can process things quickly. You can see the results fast and experiment. And that's the main thing is you have to experiment with this stuff in order to have fun with it to begin to learn it. So I hope that you can take these skills and apply them to your own projects in some really exciting ways. We'd love to hear about it. Please share it with us and leave us a comment here on YouTube for this video. If you enjoyed it, give us a like and please subscribe to the channel. Let us know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. See ya.